Australia has just had its 2020 budget. I'm going to look through some of the highlights of it and go over some of the winners and losers from the budget. And in short, basically there's a lot of debt and the ultimate losers are going to be whoever has to repay that debt. However, in the short term, there are going to be some clear winners. And I'm naturally going to go over who those might be. Now I have a background in finance. I've published several peer-reviewed finance articles. I have a PhD in finance. So I know a little bit about how the financial markets work and about how budgets work in general terms. So with that in mind, I'm going to go through what it means for us. Now, if you have any thoughts about the budget or about the sheer amount of debt that's been amassed, drop those in the comments below. Otherwise, it would be brilliant if you click the like and subscribe buttons. All right, so let's have a look at the high level numbers. The high level shocker numbers are effectively A, the new debt ceiling going up to $1.1 trillion, and also B, the sheer amount of the deficit being a little bit over 200 billion. Effectively, there's a lot of debt and a lot of deficit. Now, to be fair to the government, a lot of this was really outside of the government's control. Now, obviously, Australia might have been in a slightly haphazard situation leading up to 2020. However, 2020 obviously had a huge shock to the government's finances. And in particular, the government has had to deal with a lot of the economic damage associated with that. So a huge portion of that deficit is really due to the JobKeeper and JobSeeker related payments, which are costing around $100 billion, which accounts for a lot of the deficit at hand. And to be fair to the government here, without JobKeeper and without JobSeeker, the long-term prospects for the Australian economy would be much worse, and there would be a lot more economic hardship without those policies being brought into place. So there are some positives there, which really are underlying that significant deficit. The other aspects of the deficit involve a degree of expenditure to some extent to try to get the economy back on its feet. So let's have a look at some of the key items here. Some key items include, for example, a lot of infrastructure expenditure in the vicinity of $10 billion anticipated. There's also expenditure on other things, for example, cybersecurity and the like. So there's miscellaneous other expenditure items here that each individually are a couple of billion here and there, and that all adds up and those obviously are going to add up to the deficit. So of the contributors to the deficit involve significant expenditure on trying to get people back into work. So for example, subsidized places for apprenticeships and subsidized employment places for people who are coming off job seeker. So that's also going to account for a degree of expenditure. Now, obviously the exact numbers are going to fluctuate a little bit, but if we're looking at about 100,000 subsidized apprenticeships, that's going to cost quite a lot of money. So that obviously is going to be another factor. We also have to build into this the tax cuts, which are going to, to some extent, influence the deficit, at least to begin with, until those start to pay economic dividends. And in particular here, there's some tax cuts, particularly for lower to middle income earners, with the tax cuts for higher income earners being in large part delayed until around 2024. And those tax cuts are going to be significantly beneficial to many everyday Australians. So that's the high level summary of what is happening in the budget. With that in mind, we can look at some clear winners and some people who are winning a bit less from this budget. Because there aren't really any clear losers directly, it's more indirect losers. So in terms of clear winners, the first clear winner is obviously taxpayers. The reason taxpayers are the clear winner is there are tax cuts. And these cuts basically apply to every taxpayer. And they'll apply through low income earners through to high income earners. So to give you some clear examples here, the threshold at which the 19% threshold applies is going to increase to 45k. What that means is you'll pay 19% tax up until you're earning $45,000. Similarly with the other thresholds also increasing. Effectively, you're going to pay a lower percentage rate of tax on a larger amount of dollars. So your total tax saving is going to go up. Now, there'll be effectively a maximum tax saving here of around $2,500. So effectively, we're looking at major tax savings of up to, per person, $2,500. A household tax saving can then be potentially up to $5,000. So that's a significant benefit to everyday Australians. The underlying premise behind this is that when people have tax cuts, it A, gives them more confidence about the economy, and therefore more confidence about spending, and also B, they have more free cash flow to actually go out and spend. 
that probably won't really impact things immediately because people at the moment are still concerned about the economy, so it'll probably save it. However, it will feed into the economy later on. There is also the normative reason for it, which is basically that the government should be giving back money to people who are working hard, applying themselves, and have developed acumen, skills, or just sheer hard work, and are going out to generate money. It makes sense for the government to give back money for those people. So that's a clear winner here. Other related winners will include anyone who is going into apprenticeships, where those apprenticeships are going to be significantly supported by the government. The reason people going into apprenticeships, either the apprentices themselves or the employers, are benefiting is the government is subsidising a lot of these places. This means that employers will potentially pay less, but also employees, the apprentices themselves. Those apprentices are more likely to be able to get a position, i.e. if it's cheaper to get an apprentice, more people are going to take on apprentices, and therefore you're more likely to be able to get a position. So in either case, you're going to benefit here. Similarly, people who are coming off job seeker and are facing the prospect of it winding down, but then end up getting employment, they're going to ultimately benefit as well, because they're going to have to some extent subsidised employment. There are however going to be limits on this, because clearly when you've got this subsidised employment, there's only so many people who will get it, only so many people actually qualify for it, because you have to be under a certain age for example. Some other beneficiaries might also include first home buyers, where there's been a bit of a increase in the threshold by which you can get the first homeowner grant. Now that's gone up in terms of how much the property value can be worth before you're locked out of that first homeowner grant, which to some extent is going to be beneficial if you're facing potentially high property prices in Sydney, Melbourne, etc. with those thresholds increasing. So those are some of our major winners. There are of course going to be some other tangential winners, but those are of course the major beneficiaries, particularly in the form of those tax cuts, the apprentices, apprenticeships rather, and the incentives to continue with business. The eight, so those are effectively what's going to happen here. In terms of major losers, we're probably seeing as major losers anyone who doesn't get one of these benefits, i.e. big businesses for example, and to some extent high income owners who don't get the bulk of their tax cut, but we're also seeing other major losers being anyone who might suffer an increase in their taxes going forward in order to pay off this debt, because debt obviously needs to be paid at some point, and that obviously raises concerns for the Australian economy in terms of paying that off. Now much of this debt of course is purchased by Australian domestic banks. However to some extent this debt will need to be paid off at some point in time in the future. So that obviously is going to be a bit of a burden on taxpayers going forward. Now in terms of amendments to this, the Labour Party is largely in a position where they have to accept many of these moves, because many of these moves would obviously be natural fits for the Labour Party in the form of reducing taxes for lower and middle income owners. It's difficult to fight against that. In terms of reducing the subsidisations for apprentices, it's difficult to fight against that as well. In terms of effectively encouraging people to get back to work, difficult to fight against that. The government can't really be blamed for the job keeper and the necessity thereof. The ALP has proposed some additional expenditure items, such as the creation of an Australian CDC, that potentially would be nice to have, but it might be especially expensive given that a pandemic is not a particularly common event. In any case, that's what the budget looks like. The budget is effectively going to shape up for a lot of expenditure, potentially quite a lot of debt, and this obviously will need to be paid for at some point. However, there is some good news for taxpayers, there's some good news for people who are seeking jobs, some good news for small businesses who might be employing people in the form of being able to get subsidised employment positions and also in the form of being able to get subsidised apprentices. So I hope that gives you a bit of an idea about what the budget is shaping up to be, how the budget might go in the future, and who might benefit or lose from the budget from what it appears. So in any case, I hope the video has been informative to you. If it has, it would be great if you clicked the like and subscribe buttons. And if you have any thoughts about the budget, drop those in the comments below. In any case, thanks so much for listening in, and I hope to see you for future videos.